APIs power the world. Every DoorDash order, every Netflix binge, every Tinder swipe, and even every unlock of your smart front door. They run your money, your messages, your moments. And right now, the AppySec One Request CTF is daring you to break them. This isn't just a game. It's a masterclass in owning the backbone of modern web applications. From weak authentication, hidden endpoints, to privilege escalation, it is all fair game. And it's exactly how real world hacks go down. I'm diving into every challenge in this CTF to snag every single flag and show you why mastering API hacking is your ticket to staying ahead of the chaos. This video is brought to you by AppySec University, where over 100,000 hackers are leveling up their API security skills. They've got killer courses like API pen testing to teach you how to hack APIs like a pro or API security fundamentals to break down the OWASP API top 10 and real world breaches. And the best part is that it's all for free. Go to appysecuniversity.com and check them out today. Don't sleep on AppySecCon, their virtual conference on May 21st. You're not gonna wanna miss this out. Links are all in the description. And then one more thing, before we jump into the CTF, if you wanna see more videos like this, when I dive into API hacking content, drop a comment saying API. That's it. Helps more people find this and lets me know that you're into it. Now let's tear into the CTF. So the good thing about the CTF is that it gives us everything that we need, including the documentation for the API. I'm going to use the Swagger version right here, but you can also get the raw version of it or use Postman to import it and interact with the CTF. I like Swagger just because it makes it a whole lot easier, especially when you authorize yourself. It just crafts all the different API calls for you right in there. And it shows you the response and all the good stuff that you need. The next thing we need to do is understand what the point of the CTF is. When we go to the list of challenges, the CTF is going to guide us through all the different steps we need to do all the way until we get to this last very step where we can finally send that one request to rule them all. The important thing here is to understand our task, which is to make sure that the meeting does not happen where it's planned. We need to guide them unknowingly to a location that we're choosing, and then we need to be ready when they arrive. And each of these steps are going to help us get there. To get it started, what we're going to do quickly is we're going to go here and register for an account. So we're gonna just make a request for register. I'm gonna hit try out. I'm gonna make a account called Nahamsek like this. And then we're gonna do Nahamsek example and then password one, two, three. We're gonna execute this and it's going to give us our account. So you can see we're registered. And as always, we need to log in with our account to get our token or our bearer token. So I'm gonna go into here and try this one out. And we're gonna give it our Nahamsek at example.com we're going to give it our password we're going to log in and this is going to give us a bearer token that is going to allow us to interact with this application so if i go into here and click user info it probably won't work because we're not logged in it says not logged in i'm going to authorize myself really quickly with that api token and you can see right here we're not logged in I'm going to request this again. And now we're logged in and we have access to this API. Now that we have an account, let's go and look at our first challenge, which is telling us to look for the user's user ID on the platform so we can infiltrate their communications. When it comes into finding a user ID, you have two options. Either find a list of users, so find a user's endpoint that's going to leak all that data for you and make your life easier, which is not the case in this one. Or find a, what I call an innocent functionality that suddenly just leaks information that is not supposed to. This happens a lot in bug bounty programs because just don't think that, hey, just because it's not being shown in the UI doesn't mean that it's not sensitive. So in this case, there was an API endpoint right here that allowed me to look at all the different locations for the API. So if we send this request right here and we try it out, it's gonna come back and show us a bunch of different locations. So in this case, there is this location with the user ID that has done this There's a location ID and there's a review. We can see that there's user IDs that we can come across. The user that we want is this user right here. And we're gonna try saying that. If we paste that into here, nothing comes up. Actually, it looks like it does come up. And it looks like it's giving us a user ID. We don't have to do anything hard here. So we have our first one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is the right thing that we need to do. And it looks like it is. So actually, this one was fairly easy. We All we had to do was find this API endpoint and look for the reviews and hope that it leaks the user ID with their usernames. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of times people think, hey, user IDs are not important. They're not gonna be doing anything for us or maybe they're not being shown in the UI. So we're gonna leak it in the API. So it's really important to look for all the different functionalities that could leak a user's user ID. So think about this, like if you're doing bug bounties or if you're doing a pen test, if you're looking for an ID and the user ID isn't being given to you, it's maybe it's not an integer. One of my favorite things to do that I always talk about is looking for the report user functionality. This is very similar to that because if you hit report and you report a user, the user ID is usually attached to it. 
unless it is created in a way that it just attaches their username and it never leaks the user ID. So that's just similar to this. You just have to find a functionality that is innocent, but somehow it's leaking the data that we want. So kudos to this one. This one was fairly easy. We're going to move to the next one, which is finding the group ID that is owned by this user to map the network of allies involved in the exchange. So we still aren't done here. It looks like there is some sort of an ID attached to this one. So it looks like we have this ID right here. So I wonder if this is a location ID that could give us some information. So I'm going to go down to locations and give it this location ID, which comes back with a ton of information. And what I need to do here really quickly is just take a note of this. And we're going to put the user ID here because I feel like we're going to need it a bunch of times. And then if I go into here and look for our user ID, nothing comes up here. It looks like there's nothing with this user ID, but what it looks like is there is we're on page one with size 50 and 241 results. I know that this already allows a hundred of them. So if I execute, it's going to give us more and we're going to switch to Kaido for this one. And I'll show you why in just a sec. So I'm going to put this in here and we're going to send the request to user info. I think that's what the request was just to make sure we're authenticated. That's not the right one. It's maybe no spaces. Yep. So we're going to do user info. I want to make sure I have a request that works. Perfect. So now we can go into our location. I'm going to quickly go back to location, location ID right here. This is not the one we want. This is the one we want. I'm going to grab the path for it. Turn off to type it in manually. This is the thing that it requests. So Put it in here, send the request. And now that we have this, we want to brute force for all these different pages. I'm going to start with 100 pages and I'm going to send this to automate really quickly. And in automate, what we're going to do is we're going to take this page right here and we're going to add our entry point. We're going to switch this to a numbers from one to 100 and we're going to quickly send that out. Now that we have all of this done, what I'm going to do quickly is go to our notes grab the user ID, and I want to look for all the results from Kaido that had that in our response. We're going to query for all the responses that we have. We're going to ask for the raw and the entire content and look for all the responses that contain this value, which is our user ID or the first bit of our user ID. Press enter. And it looks like on page 25, this user has some data, which this is our creator ID which is probably the one that we want. And there is a group ID. I think that we're looking for the group ID, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to go into here, go back. This is the group ID. We're going to try this out, see if it's the right one. And that is our second one. So we have two. So far, we have our group ID and our user ID. So I'm going to go back to my notes and also type in group ID because we're going to need this later on. And then move on to our next challenge, which is to find the activity ID, the hidden activity ID associated with the secret meeting about the Moonstone. So it looks like this is attached to this one because I'm assuming the activity ID is based on the location. So I'm going to go back to this request right here and just grab the ID that's attached to it and throw it in there. And that is also correct. So we have our activity ID now to take notes, activity ID. And now this is probably my favorite part of the CTF, also the hardest part, but it makes you really think about a bunch of different things. So let me show you what I mean by that. What we have to do here is we have to forge a new token with Palantir user role. So what I thought initially here was maybe some JWT hacking, maybe we can crack the algorithm secret, maybe we can forge a new JWT token. None of that worked. There was nothing to do with this. I also went as far as trying to do some mass assignment. So if you look right here, there is a user users route that allows you to patch your users. So I thought maybe I could mess around with this, do something, nothing worked. I also went as far as registering a new account and trying to assign a role using mass assignment and saying my role is Palantir. None of that worked until I did this. If you go to the support right here and you click on legacy and you try it out really quickly, it shows that we are requiring a legacy version of the app while we're allowed to be on API v2. And it says that right here, users should use API versions v2. One of the things that I noticed earlier when I was registering doing my token was this. I always see this, whether it's in the path of the API, whether it's in a token like this. When I have versioning, I always assume there is some other version like a V1, V1.1, V3, whatever that is, right? And a lot of times if you have a V2 and a V1, there are vulnerabilities in that previous version that have been addressed in the newer one, right? So in this case, I went into here and I tried V1 to create a new token and I sent the request and it said that I can't do this because I'm requesting API version V1 and I'm only allowed on V2. The other thing that I noticed here is that specifically this right here matches the error that we had earlier down here that said legacy. So I realized maybe I can do V1 and I have to send it a legacy version because this is telling us, hey, if you want to interact with legacy, you have to have legacy version in there. So I went back up in through here and I thought maybe we need to do legacy here and 
by luck. Maybe we'll give us some new token. It looks like we are doing legacy, but the user isn't still allowed to interact with this API because of our role. This is really, really important because we need to find a way to bypass the requirement for this role. A lot of times when I see an error like this, my brain automatically goes to, I need to privilege escalate. I need to find another user role so I can get access to it. In this case, it's the other way around. Instead of the application having a whitelist of user roles that have access to this, it has a deny list. So it says, hey, if your role is a user, you don't get access. If you have the different user role, I will give you access to it. So now our objective changes from changing our user role to something with more privilege to just completely changing it to something that is not user. So it's not giving us role equals to user. And we can do that easily by going to this user route right here and deleting our account. So if we go down here and give it our user ID, I need to go to user info first. Let me just close some of these that we don't need. And we grab our user ID right here. We go down to delete user. And if we send this, we're going to try it. And as soon as we send this request, we're no longer having the user role user attached to us, which now if we send this request right here with our token to legacy, it is going to come back and give us an actual token, which should give us access to interact with support. We're going to look for support one more time. I'm going to close this since we won't need it for a while. We're going to go to legacy and we're going to click on this button right here, log ourselves out and use this. And now I want to see if I have access to this. So if I do summary right now, it's going to come back. And let me just show you what it looks like if we use our old API token. I'm going to go to Kaido replay. This is our old API token that we had. We're not using the new one. If I go to support summary, it says not allowed. Should be using V2, not legacy. But now let's change our token really quickly to the new one that we got. Send this request. And now we suddenly have access to summary. And we can see all the tickets that have been created on this application. And if we scroll all the way through, there's a bunch of garbage in here. But the thing that stands out to me is change role to Palantir, which could be the one that we want to go after. But there's also an admin urgent. That's the relocation request, which is probably the one that we're going after. And there's a bunch of these. But the problem here is that we don't have any IDs. None of these have an ID. They just have a message, the number of messages, if it's resolved, and the title. So we need to find these and get access to them. So what I'm going to do here is go to right here again, go to our documentation. Now, if we look at our request right here, we look like anytime I want to get a specific support ticket, I need to pass the request ID and it looks like it's potentially could be an integer, which is says it right here, it's integer. So we'd have to guess what, all we have to do is just find some integer that goes into here and figure it out. So I'm going to go back to our reports right here. I'm going to give it the request one, get the support request. It doesn't work. It looks like it's going to say not found. So that is not the way we want to do it. There are a couple of other ones, including put that takes a request ID and a message, which is a query string right here. So we can pass it in the path at the top and it takes a user ID. So I'm going to try this one and see if this actually gives us something that we can play with. So if I send request one with the message right here, it looks like it gives us an error, but in the error right here, it leaks the entire content of that ticket, but we don't exactly have what we need. So we need to automate this. We're going to do this one more time by sending this to automate. We're going to make this the entry point of what we want to test for. We want to make it a number and we're going to do it from zero to a hundred with this put request and this parameter test. We're going to run it. And as soon as it's done, we're going to do one more thing. We're going to search through all of our responses and look for anything that mentions Palantir. So I'm going to do response, the raw content. If it contains this, we want it. And it looks like all of these actually have it. So now we can go through all of these. Actually, I'm going to start with the one that has the largest size. So we go to nine. And within this, if I look for our keyword, it looks like it is giving us a path that says for emergency relocations, staff can generate short lived tokens using this. Think of it as borrowing the site of the seeing stones, though the vision fades quickly for safety. So it gives us a, maybe some sort of an information. I want to know if there's any other paths that are leaked in here. And there is a group ID chat. I'm assuming we're going to have to come back to that. So I'm going to just take a note of this really quickly. So we have this and we also have glimpse. I want to see what glimpse does really quick. So I'm going to take this, go to replay and do a get request to glimpse. This is not one that we knew about. It is a hidden endpoint that maybe we could have found by brute forcing for this path, but the logical way is to follow the CTF. And it looks like we are not allowed to do a get request. And it says right here, the method allowed for it is a post. And if we make our post request, it's going to come back and give us an API token. And it says, hey, authorization required, all that good stuff. We're going to go back to our CTF right here, give it this token. And it looks like so far we have solved the first four challenges. And we have one, two, 
three more to go so i'm not going to lie that last one really was incredibly hard it makes you think about a million different things and there's so many different pieces to it and this next one that we have to do is it's based on location so maybe i thought we have to find a location that our user trusts us. and if we think about one of the steps earlier i think it was level two we have a list of locations already let me show you really quick if we open up kaido again and hit our locations we can just filter and find all the different locations that our user has left a review for and there aren't a lot of them there's seven of them and all these are interesting but the one that we got his user id from was something up here honestly there are seven locations and the easiest way to do this is just try them all one by one and after trying them all this one was specifically the one that made sense honestly i couldn't figure out why this was the case but it looks like there is some review that he has sent and his user id is attached to it so if we copy this and put it into this location right here it looks like that is the right one. Honestly, I just figured out that they need a location ID. We already have a user. We already found the user ID from the location. The only place I could find location IDs was here. And just by a small brute force, I got this one. If you have done this and you know how to do this one, drop me a comment down below and let me know. I feel like I kind of cheated with this one, but it is what it is. It's part of CTF. And I really wanted to get to the last part of it, which we have one more before we get to it. So now it says we need to go back to our token that we have from earlier. Luckily, I have this right here in our Kaido. So I can just copy it again in case I need it. And we need to find the original activities code before our access expires. And I think this is something to do with our ID and the chat that we're supposed to go after. I'm just going to put this right here in case we need it. So I think this is something we have to do here with the ID and the chat. So now that we know what we're looking after, I'm gonna open up Kaido really quickly. And we're just going to take this one right here and we're going to send our groups. And then we need to go to the ID chats. I'm gonna go into it, grab our ID, throw it in here. I'm gonna ask him to get request. And we're gonna swap our bearer token with this one. Let's swap one more time. So I got JWT expired. So I gotta do this one more time. Get our new token. Let's go back into here. Get our new token really quickly before it expires. Send the same exact request. And it looks like now we have gotten our password. It's gotta be somewhere in here. I'm gonna do maybe password access grant now we have our last step which is the password and it tells us that it starts with one request so we could just look for it we submit this is the right one and now we need to create the ultimate request that will redirect the user and set our trap for the moonstone exchange so we need to figure out what this looks like and this should be fairly easy because we already have the entire request right here under one request and it does take a lot of different parameters so we have to think about this a little bit luckily we have everything in our notes that we need to put here so i'm going to just quickly send this request and it looks like we need our group id followed by the location id that we brute force for kind of and then the body is going to have an invite code which is probably this one that we already know and then the last thing that it wants is the user id which is the user that we found in the very first step and hopefully this works okay, we're not authorized to use palantir so it makes sense we have to we have to quickly just go back into here and get a new token because i don't think this works i'm going to just do it one more time because i took too long i'm going to take this and i'm going to authorize it one more time right here close and send this request out and it looks like it comes back and it gives us the final flag for this challenge that's a wrap on the ctf challenge if you made it this far you are a real one don't forget to like this video and if you haven't already drop an api in the comments if you want to see more videos like this and seriously go check out appsec university and sign up it is totally free it's dope and it will level up your hacking game today i'll catch you on the next one peace